welcome to episode number three of my floss tube. My name is Gerilyn and I go by Jerjer X Stitches, G E R underscore G E R X Stitches on Instagram. Um, the same as my channel name. Um, it's been a busy couple weeks um, since I filmed my last video. One week felt a little short. It was a pretty crazy week. Um, two weeks ago now and then two weeks felt kind of long but work and you'll see um, I've been pretty hard at work stitching has kind of taken precedent over filming but I'm back I am thinking about potentially doing Flossmas like the channel's how old a couple weeks and I'm like oh, I'm gonna go all in and like film every day I have no idea what that's going to be like um, I have two uh, advent boxes that I want to unbox. One is the Evertotes box and one is um, from the Loopy U that goes along with an Imagine Landscapes gnome knit along that starts also on December 1. I'm trying to figure out like what does that look like opening versus like where I'm at with stitching and spoilers or no spoil like still trying to think through all of that but I have some ideas uh, that'll be fun for that. Um, so stay tuned for that. Uh, take a minute and like and subscribe um, if you'd like to come back and thanks for stopping by. So let's see. I think we'll start with some FFOs. I swear like um, I don't know what it is. I uh, haven't finished a ton of projects like in the life span of my stitching uh, life. I um, don't usually have a lot of FFOs especially and so I don't know what's different if it's you know the motivation from floss tube or just kind of the different size and type of projects that I've been working on um, but yeah I have a few FFOs so that's exciting um, maybe I should show my book of days first let's do that so I've been working on getting in the habit of updating my book of days at least every couple days I can hopefully remember I don't have anything like too crazy for decoration so far, um, but that's what it looks like. Um, and I'm using it to keep track of my, when I start things and kind of what I stitch on over time. And I think it will definitely come in handy when I talk about when I have to look back and see, you know, what do I need to show you for progress. I also have been thinking that um, I need to remember to take pictures like after I film so that I can show you like where things were at the last time you saw it and remind you. Um, because I'm going to show you some whips and I have no idea where I was before so I need to work on that but um, so a part of what I've been doing is catching up on my um, my like log for this year since I started um, the begin the end of October is when I got my 2022 book of days realizing or planning that these would become my ways to track my way to track my stitching year to year and so I wanted to catch up my 2021 finishes so I started craft stitching for reals um, I had stitched before but like really gotten into craft stitching in November of 2021 uh, and so I only had a few projects that I got in in 2021 and that is I'm counting this it's technically embroidery and I have this in person to show you as well um, and then I did the Barbara Anna Stitch Along Miss Claus Sal, um, and that was a mystery stitch along that I did last November and December. So the pictures aren't like, like these photo, zinc photo pictures, they're not great, right? They're not going to be like the original, but it's a nice little visual to go along with um, the notes. So um, I have my list so far um, of 2022 stitches. I think I need to catch up because I have another one since then. So I, um, once I, like I had to like kind of go through a, a few different sources, Instagram, Facebook, uh, my digital planner that I tried, a journal that I was started to try and figure out my start and finish dates. And then I listed them out on a, just a scrap piece of paper by, um, by the, the finish date so that I could get them in order so that I can get them in the book. So. I finally feel like I have them organized. I have a few that I've taken a picture of and um, printed out the picture, so I need to catch up with that. Uh, and I want to—that's my goal—is to be caught up by 2023. Get a list of whips in here. I want to go through. I have a lot of organization in my brain. I don't know if it's like because the new year is coming, 
So I've got a, my pile of whips that I'm pointing at like behind the camera. Um, then I want to go through, kind of catalog, look through my project bags, like are there ones that like are going to get set aside for a while so I can use the bags. Um, what do I want to get back into stitching in the new year? I am planning on doing a whip parade and I also want to do a stash parade as I look over at my stash. Um, and then Amazon is bringing me uh, some binders and organization things that maybe I can show you um, during my next video just to kind of try a different organization system for my patterns um, and my stash. So that is kind of where I've, my head's been at. Oh, so let me show you before I show you my FFOs. This is the um, creative, I think it was Creative Poppy. I found it on Etsy, the sign up for it. This was a, an embroidery sal for an advent calendar. It was like an advent one for all of um, December. So it started December 1st and then I think our finish was this middle one for Christmas. Um, not the best. This is like my first real true embroidery project beyond what I had done, you know, intermittently or way back when I was a kid. So uh, some of it, you can definitely tell the ones that were early and the ones that, you know, I, I improved over time, I feel like so. But it was super fun. I did modify my colors a little bit from what was called for just to get like the Christmas colors that made sense to me and matched. I think the the a pattern called for like a white or a cream um, fabric and I wanted to do something a little different. So with that gray, I think the colors, the gray isn't showing up super great. It's weird lighting here today. I have a little tiny window in my craft room and um, we've been getting a lot of lake effects now. We haven't had good light for filming for a couple of days so that can also be my excuse but some point I have to try her out so here I am and then I, I think I showed this project bag last time I had a project in it recently um, with this fabric is made out of and then I used some of the extra fabric for the backing so this was finished in time that I left it out the rest of the time that our Christmas decorations were out and then it went away into my craft room because I was nervous about what would happen to it if it went into our Christmas direct decoration so that is that so that's an old finish from last year. Um, okay, so FFOs. Remember last time I had finished my pumpkin trio? So I got a back on it with my initials and the month and date. Still haven't put a magnet on it or decided exactly what to do with that. The same with the Christmas tree. So still working on that, but I got the felt on it at least and feel like it's, I'm gonna count it as a finish or a, fully fin a full finish. Um, last time, I had been working on um, Noel, or had it was I planning on starting it? I think maybe I was planning on starting it. Um, where's my book? Let me look and see. I had started it, and I was going to finish it. I think it didn't. I, I don't think I finished it um, when I thought I was going to, which was on. And, oh no, I did. I finished it on Sunday like I had planned. And then I fully finished it. So these, all of the extras um, came in the kit. I don't know quite how to show this. This was my first finish that I did with the walnut shells. Um, and it turned out great. It's nice and heavy. Um, it was a little bit tricky trying to figure out how to get it closed and keep all the shells in. Um, but yeah. But it turned out pretty good. Uh, we don't have our Christmas decorations out quite yet, so it's just been hanging out in here waiting to show you all. Um, I got my walnut shells on Amazon. I ordered, um, I had heard from Colorado Cross Stitcher that she uses lizard litter. The lizard litter on Amazon was a little bit more expensive for the weight compared to um, it's like bird litter, bird crushed walnut shells. So same idea, just marketed from um, for birds instead of reptiles. Um, but that worked really well. So I kind of I like that weight, um, and I think it will come in handy for a lot of future things. So I have a lot left, and that's great. Um, so other FFOs are not of a cross stitch variety, but they're cross stitch adjacent because they're for my cross stitch things. So, um, the first, I got like a whole pile down here. I tried flipping the camera around, right, so that you could actually see a little bit of my work. Um, I have 
the, the video, it was the wall that I filmed behind in my craft room the last few times is completely blank. Um, and it feels silly, like, one at a time, like, putting, like, this tiny little picture frame on this giant wall. Um, and when I had started this wall, my craft room was organized a little bit different, so I have to decide, like, if I smooth everything over, like, when do I start growing that wall? But, like, for a while, there's gonna be, like, one or two things on it that look pretty silly, so. Um, anyway, I don't even know where I was going with that, but a little bit different view today. Um, I'm, you're, you're now seeing my workspace so you can see my iron over here with my light um, right behind me is a wool ironing mat and then where I cut my fabric and kind of keep keep my stuff that I'm working on so um, so anyways oh, that's where I was going so I have instead of having my stuff out on the table in front of me which will be better because I think the wobbling will be less if I'm not touching the table um, I have to bend down a little bit to grab my things so um, I did not show this in my last video, I don't think, um, but had been working on it last weekend and then, or two weekends ago, and then I wrapped, I finished it up doing the binding. This, it's so cute. It matches the, the bag that I showed my first last two. It is a stitching mat, and so the idea is it's quilted. This is what the back looks like. I love this stitching Christmas fabric. That was a really great use of this panel. And so I have pockets here with um, interfacing, so it's nice and um, firm. And then I decided to do a pocket, a vinyl pocket across the bottom as well. So this is my first kind of mock-up of my interpretation of a stitching mat or a retreat mat. Um, I put a few little um, tabs here so that if I wanted to like hook in my floss. So the idea with this is I wanted to try it out. I wanted a Christmas one and I thought I might even like to uh, sit with it in my lap um, to kind of keep my project a little bit more organized, have a few pockets to like throw my scissors and stuff. I like to stitch in hand and just kind of sit however I'm comfortable, whatever position I'm comfortable in. And so that can mean that things fall sort of like beside me in the couch and then in, into the side of the couch or in the, all the way down to the back of the recliner sometimes. So I thought this would come in handy and then for retreat my idea of having like the vinyl is then for retreats you know if I decide to print my own like floss tube cards or that kind of thing I could have a stash in one pocket as I meet people and then gather others in the other pocket and it just might be nice to have a pocket where I can see things in anyway so I thought that would be kind of a neat idea so and then I have just stuck my little needle minder on there for now actually was when I was binding it I had like my spool of binding of the thread I was using for binding, my hand stitching thread and my uh, needles for quilting uh, and my scissors kind of tucked in it and it worked really well even as I was stitching on it. I have not quilted in a while. I have a quilting Bible. Um, I call it my quilting Bible. It's like this little like half size book um, that has tons of like question and answer like how do I do this? This is how you do it. How do you do that? What about this kind of thing? Um, and I love it. I found it a long time ago. I've never been able to find it again. I actually tried to find it for my mom, and I don't think I was ever successful. Um, but anyways, I love it. Um, but I forgot how to bind, and I sewed the binding on wrong like twice to get the miter corners before I remembered. I um, did pick up some quarter inch um, steam seam that I'll show in my haul um, that I was hoping to use it for, but it didn't come in time, and so I did hand um, whip stitch this in the back but in the future all right sorry for that interruption um, so my thought is if I can use the steam seam then I can I like this the look of like a for something like this it's more utilitarian I do like the look of the a stitch finish for the binding um, but I need to be sure that I've got it like over and like tucked enough that it's actually gonna catch on the back um, because I want it to look nice on the front and so I think next time when I make one I'll make a steam a seam so I'm tossing around I'm going to two retreats next year I'm tossing around the idea if what well, of what I want to bring for my table mates these might be an idea um, so if you want to be my table mate you might get one of these um, but like I so thinking through ways to be a little bit more efficient as well instead of hand stitching the binding so we'll see how those go but that um, I was pretty happy with how that finished and now I can start using it. I um, will talk about in my plans I have a project that I want to start on Thanksgiving and I think I showed this fabric last time 
I love, love, love this fabric. It might have even been the time before. I love this fabric. It's so great. Um, so I made a bag. I made a couple bags. So this, oh, I have some threads. So this is one. Uh, I'm not going to show, show the little one. It'll be hard to sh show you what the inside looks like. So this is the inside. Super cute. Um, and so I have that finish. It's a little bit of an odd shape. I think I cut it to be like this. And then <laughs> I looked and I was like, all the mushrooms will be sideways if I sew it like this. So we're going to try it out like this. And then like my, um, I think this will fit a full sheet of paper. Or pretty close. So like my, yeah, it will. So my pattern and stuff can go in like the right way instead of having it sideways. So we'll try an orientation like this, see how it goes. Um, I can always store it this way to match all my other bags too. So I was pretty happy with those. So a bag and the accessory pouch to go with it. So now that I've shown you that, I can finish fully kitting up that project that we'll talk about in plans. And I think I talked about it last time too. Um, I also made a bag for my knit along. So I made this bag with a little accessory bag. A little bit, this accessory bag is a little bit bigger um, than the one last one that I showed. It was partly because that was the cut of fabric I had left and partly because with knitting I feel like you need a little bit more space than with cross stitch sometimes depending on what you're going to put in your little accessories bag. So this will be my knit along um, bag, accessory bag, and then this one is if I can shake it out and show you. It's a wedge tote. So I'll be able to get my yarn in there and then what's really neat about what it because it's a little bit tall when I want to be working on it I can fold it down like this and then just leave the balls of yarn right in there and stitch out of the bag knit out of the bag so that's super fun I'm excited about my knit along and um, I will show you my um, my yarn for that uh, in my haul and then I can kit that up, get it caked and kit up, kit it up and ready to go. So, um, so I have those two and then I had a little bit of extra fabric beyond and I was already working on everything so this is I'm thinking maybe like a little mini like a smalls project bag. Um, how big is it? Um, I don't know what to show you for comparison. So this is my book of days. So I, would th I don't think a half size will fit because it's not like wide enough. You'd have to quarter fold the pattern um, of your working copy. Or if it's like a little card like a Mill Hill, they usually come folded anyways, they would fit in here. So I thought that would be fun. Instead of just wasting the fabric, I can make a quick little... Um, I buy my zippers on Amazon. I got them in like a giant pack um, with a bunch of different colors, which is really nice. I think they're 16 inch. I have did one project, the next thing that I'll show you... Um, that they weren't quite, they weren't as quite as long as I wanted them to be, but I was able to make it work. But most of the time, what I what I work on those zippers are great. So let me know if you want the link for that, and I can uh, throw that in the comments or um, in the description for you. Okay, last fully finished, but it's stitching adjacent is my zipper around zipper tote don't look too close it wasn't the best experience ever I definitely muddled through a few steps um, I had seen a few different like YouTube videos on how to make these ones where they zip like open and all the way around um, and I picked the one I think that was hardest and I didn't realize it until it was too late to go back so uh, getting the getting everything together getting the, uh, the zipper on and the binding was rough I think one of the other things that made it a little bit more difficult is I used, oh, what's it called? It's like super stiff interfacing. It's almost like really, really felted fabric. Um, it's so that it's almost like as stiff as like uh, cardstock would be, but it's fabric so it doesn't quite, like it will it will crease, but doesn't crease like, like paper would. Um, anyways, and so it's, I wanted it nice and firm, but that made it, I think, difficult to kind of maneuver around all these edges, like with my sewing machine. Um, I think I should have made it more like a book, right? So that instead of having, because this part, the binding was the hardest part, um, the other way to make it would have been to make the inside and then the outside, and then I would have only have had to bind. So instead of having to, let's see. So instead of having to bind both edges all the way around, I really could have just bound it like a project bag or a book. 
where it would have been bound just or had the binding all the way around this this way um, and it still would have opened nice and flat like a book but you live you learn you do things better the next time around this is definitely my beta version um, because I was a little bit frustrated and I didn't have a ton of patience I think also because uh, I didn't really want to whip stitch all of this I did use steam a seam to like bring my binding down over here and it seems I think it will hold pretty well and if it doesn't it will be time for a new one um, because this is definitely like a test version um, but I don't want to waste it I want to use it so for now this will work and if I ever get the inkling to make another one and I want to make it a little bit nicer it'll be nicer but I think for the first time you know it is what it is so what is it I didn't tell you what it was so it's this little zipper pouch and I wanted some things that I could store my printer that I got for my birthday my little codex ink printer that I am using for documenting all my whips or whatever pictures I want um, and so then I did make this little tab with a snap button um, to kind of help hold it in and then on the other side it is a place to hold my extra papers and so I um, ended up getting also you can't see it on here so you can get like the full size two by three papers and then they also have like it's two um, square stickers for this this brand of printer um, so that is like a little they call it a sticker sheet um, but it doesn't have a picture on the little package of what they look like so anyway so I have two different options there depending on what I want to load into the printer and what's nice about these is they're not like the ones that require they're not like the Polaroid paper where like once you put a pack in it has to stay I think you can pull them in and out because they're not like light sensitive um, at least I don't think they are like like the Polaroids are so got a place to store my zinc printer I can take it along with me now keep it safe and have its own little designated storage space so those are all my fully finished things we can move on to finishes so I think it's just one right I don't know why my memory like I have all these ideas in my head and then the second I push record it's like gone um, okay so my last floss tube was on the 6th and my last so I finished Noel and then fully finished it so that's why I feel like I'm missing something there we go and so I started as soon as I finished Noel I worked on my um, so I worked on Christmas Eve that I'll show you that um, I pulled a bunch out remember I was having trouble getting like his cloak to match I pulled a bunch out got it to match, started working on the edging of his cloak, and then moved up like some like the green on his feet, hit like the black feet, and then like the green of the front of his front, I don't know. Uh, and then I went and moved up to go towards like where he's like holding his bag over his shoulder to, towards the bag, and I was half a stitch off, which is super frustrating. I think it's because the white, anyway, I'll talk about it when I show you it it'll make more sense so anyways I abandoned it I put it in timeout because I um, didn't want to pick and then restart quite then and this particular project was burning a hole in my pocket I really wanted to start it um, and so I took a break um, and decided to stitch this instead and then I've been working on this const oh, pretty often I didn't have a ton of stitchy time last weekend um, so I think like Monday night I stitched on and got a lot of progress Tuesday I was like oh I'll finish tonight Wednesday, all finished tonight. I finally finished it last night, and this is "Be Ye or Be Be Merry All" by um, Park Hopper Bart, and this is the Ever Totes collaboration, um, holiday collaboration. So this is the one that came with the Leo and Roxy floss, exclusive to Ever Totes. I got the PDF. It, I think it's only available in PDF. Um, and then this is the Leo and Roxy Billie Jean. I did mine on 40 count, one over one. And it's, in, I don't know how well it's showing up, it, um, but it says, Be merry all with Holly Deck, the festive hall. Prepare the song, the feast, the ball, to welcome Merry Christmas. And it's spelled in like that old English, Merry. I love it. Um, I don't think that, and I've tried taking pictures like with my phone, uh, this powdered up 
floss, like the the video and the pictures just don't do those that color justice. It's a beautiful variegation that really, um, it this box lends itself well to showing off. Um, but yeah, super fun. I love the colors, like the yeah, this like the way the gold and like the chartreuse green plays with the darker greens and the red. So. Um, I'm pretty excited. I didn't take a ton of floss to get this done, and so I have a few of the flosses that are I have um, in kits and stash for other projects that have Leo and Roxy, so I'm going to move things around and be able to use these over again without just putting them in my stash, like, less than a fourth used, so pretty excited about that. Um, I... Went with my family to Lowe's today, and I picked up some, um, I don't even know what they're called. They're like the trim that you would put for like crown molding, or you could put like on the top of a chair rail, for a decorative chair rail like on your wall, um, that I'm going to attempt to make into picture frames. So I have to do some gluing today to get them ready to be cut, and then I bought stain. So I'm hoping that will make... Uh, finding picture frames a little bit more accessible to me uh, by making them myself, but it'll be a little bit of a process. So that is the plan for that. I will frame it and put it up on my probably my blank wall that I'm still looking at right now. Finished. So those are my finishes. Um, yeah, let's talk about whips. So I did stitch on Christmas Eve uh, quite a bit. I'll show you and maybe try to explain why I had to set it down. Uh, I can't find the fabric. Oh, it's right here tucked in the bottom corner. The super cute bag. I really need to decide. I, I love this bag and I want to keep using it for Christmas stuff right now. So it depends on, it. am I going to pick this back up or do I want to like set it aside so I can use the bag and then I know I'll get back to it eventually. So this is on... Um, let me grab my card here. I don't remember. This Be Stitch Me Morning Fog is the fabric. Um, I'm using all the called for, except I switched out the Bayberry for the green to Pinery by Gentle Art. Um, this is the pattern, just to jog your memory. He's so cute. I really want to get back to him. I just, I think the morning fog is light enough, like with the, um, and I got a new light that I was using when I did this, with the white for the trim that I think I just missed a thread somewhere and I got off and then it's done deal. So like between here and he, somewhere in here, I'm a half of a square. So I'm stitching this, it's 40 count, one over one, and there's a, there's either a one or there's either, I mean, one over two, sorry. So there's either a one over one here or a one over three, and I can't find it because the white is so faint. So, but I did get this all matched up and this is ready to go, but I have to pick out like seriously, like all of this and up here and all of this is wrong. So that's when I got a little bit discouraged um, and just wanted to move on to something else. So I will have to keep this in mind um, and I can start, you know, picking it slowly maybe working on getting it get back back going but I feel like this white trim like I to get really anywhere other than maybe to go up here and go this way I have to get this right in order to really kind of move to the rest of him so I don't know I tried doing the gray that's like because there's this like it's hard to see there's this patterning in there I tried doing the gray first that also was a little hard to see I don't know We'll keep at it. Um, I know that when it's difficult like this, that's when I'm building my skills and it gets, I've, I've had that experience like with Moonshine Cabin, like as my first linen project on dark linen, um, I learned quickly I needed to stitch it during the day only. I found what works for me. I learned a ton and I know that that's what, ha what will happen with this one too. Just need to be in the right mood to be in the, it's hard and I need to learn. Um, it's, it's making me, it's helping me grow, I should say. So We'll get there. Um, my other whip is I Am No Bird. This is my black sa sampler selection for November. Um, I'm happy with how far I got, even though I don't think I spent like a ton of time stitching it. 
Um, I want to work more on this, but like I just have the Christmas bug and I don't know what to do about that other than Jacob, like, why did you pick November? <laughs> I want to stitch Christmas in November, but I've been looking forward to Black Sampler November all year. So, um, I don't know what will happen with this one. I do love it. I love the pattern. Um, we'll get there. So I got the house outline, like the first section of the house and then started on the middle section. The first chimney is in for the roof. So I'll just keep plugging away again. I'm outlining the house cause I like to do fill. I like to f like to have chunks that I can fill in when I can, when I don't have to pay attention to the pattern or I don't have the ability to pay attention to the pattern. So this is, um, on hog bristle, 40 count, one over two with, um, char chalk, chalkboard, Leo and Roxy chalkboard as my black floss. So again, I, I really like this pattern. I love this stitch. It's just Christmas is getting in the way. Let me get you, um, let me get you an actual, do I only have the pattern copied? I thought I had a picture of the whole thing. Oh, here it is. So that's what it'll look like when it's done. So I love it. I want to keep going on it. Speaking of Jane Eyre uh, Stitching Book Club, I did their Narnia Sal um, earlier this year. Uh, she's I took a little bit of a hiatus. She's back. She has her Jane, a Jane Eyre sampler. It actually went on sale today. I thought she it's not a mystery. She's doing it. She did like all one release at once. So we know what the pattern looks like, but she has two options. She has a bigger, more sampler looking thing with like Jane and Edward's um, fate, like profiles and then all the different houses that Jane lived at through the story. Uh, and then there's one with just the quote that she included um, in, the, in the border and things. So um, I don't know. I like the idea of it. Uh, it's a beautiful uh, pattern. The colors are a little, I don't know, like brown muted tone. So like not 100% my style. So I do think if I decide to do it, I'll have to change up the colors a little bit. So I think maybe someday is where I am with that. But um, I was excited to see her release. It was a really cute pattern. I like her, the idea. So anything Jane Eyre is, is awesome. So that one is that whip. So I think my current whips are actually new starts according to you all because you haven't seen them yet. Um, I did, I got my Satsuma, I think I showed my Satsuma um, what are ornament, ornament kits in and I decided to start Tree Topper. The idea would be this one's a little bit more portable or if I need a little break. Excuse me. Um, so I started him. I got all the flosses put on a little card. You can see on the, you can't see it on the other side. I like to label what their number and colors are um, to like match the pattern. But uh, I find that separating them and putting on a little card with holes in it helps me keep them organized. So if you needed that idea, you can try that out. Um, and this is my really oh. This is my really sad start. I just got like a little bit of his tree hat going. And that's all I really got done because you know, Be Merry All just really, I loved stitching Be Merry All. It was, I enjoyed, I enjoyed most of it. I did frog a few times, like the whole side border, <laughs> right as I thought I was done. Um, but I'm glad that I took the extra time to do it right because it would have made a difference, especially framing it. I know I want to frame it pretty tight and so it is what it is um, it's all a part of the process so anyways um, I do want to get back to that also so Satsuma a couple weeks ago they released uh, an ornament for this year it's like Mr. and Mrs. Claus and they're like kind of like dancing they're like kind of I don't know tilted to one side it's really cute same similar like uh, color palette and I wanted to get the kit, but she mentioned in her announcement that she had a couple, like another four pack for 2022 uh, Christmas ornaments coming out. And so I waited. She released them today, so I quick grabbed them right away. So hopefully they'll get shipped to me pretty fast. And then I think I'll have all the Satsuma ornaments. What am I, I don't know what I'm going to do with them all, but I, mm, I take that back. I won't have them all, but I'll have most of them. But I did get the 2022 holiday four pack which are really cute. So go check out Satsuma Street. The kits are really great. They come really nicely packaged. There's like a piece of cardboard in here. There's the booklet and then the pattern is in there too. 
um, as a separate card. They're really well, well kitted um, with the floss and then the the beads and all those things. I'm pretty, it says on the pattern that they're Mill Hill, but they're not labeled like the Mill Hills have the bead numbers on them. So I haven't taken the time to separate them and look um, because if they, I'm working on, like as I'm doing my Mill Hill ornaments, I'm separating them out into little bead buckets. And so if the same kit has the same number, or multiple kits have the same number, I'm putting them all in there so that eventually, like, I'll have a stash of beads. Um, so I'll have to look close and see if they are the same or not, if I can put them in there. Moral of that story. I don't know about the sequins. I think the sequins on this pattern make sense in his hat as, like, the lights. I don't love the sequins in his beard. I don't know what it is. I think I'm just going to put beads there instead of sequins, but... He's super cute. I'm excited to do more on him. So keep you posted on that. Um, and then my other new start. Nope, not a new start. My almost new start. I finished kidding while we were out and about today. I think I talked about this in my plans last week. So this pattern was meant to replace um, Be Ye Mary. I just didn't expect that I would be ready quite so soon because Be Ye Mary wasn't coming until after... Um, Christmas Eve. So this is Christmas Eve again, but this time it is Prairie Schooler Christmas Eve. Sorry about the... There we go. So I have this kitted in the called 4 DMC, and this fabric that I chose will look familiar because, so Caroline, when she does, most of the time, when she does fabric for, um, for projects, kits um, she does standard cuts for them so she'll do like an eighth or a quarter or, um, and well when whatever cut it is it's the same size of 28 count right because 28 count would be the big it's the biggest stitches so you would need the most fabric for the the number of stitches up and you know width and lengthwise for the project the beauty of stitching in 40 count is is her standard cut for 40 count leaves quite a bit extra. So I have like enough for this whole um, project on 40 count. So I'm going to use the rest of my Billie Jean. I thought it would be fun to have like the night sky kind of blue looking instead of this more, I mean, I, I know Prairie, Prairie Schooler is like traditional, right? So like having the like more just kind of cream color background, neutral background, but I thought more of a night sky. I'm gonna tip it. I don't know if you can tell. So that the darkness is higher and then like built down at the bottom is where like the lighter colors are. So it'll kind of make sense um, to go along with the way the picture is. And I just kitted all my floss and I was just about to put my first stitch in. I actually did put a couple stitches in and then it was in the wrong space and I was like, mm, I should probably go film instead and then maybe start working on this. So I did do a center start and then I thought I was starting where I wasn't and then I had to pull it out. So anyways, these are the colors. This is a, um, oh darn, I should have talked about them last week. They came from Britain. She does these little flips. Um, I don't remember her name. My gauge marker. Um, and the um, flash drops that I'm using are Adam Hart. These are actually there. I got a bag of the like the ones that are like not perfect that they sell on discount. Uh, I thought they would fit in these a little bit better than they do, which is why um, they're all kind of hanging. So I don't know if I'm going to keep them. Whoopsie. I don't know if I'm going to keep them in here, uh, but they're in here for now. So I am excited to get going on this one. The only modification that I'm expecting to make at this point, keeping it in my Ever Totes 2022 holiday nutcracker bag, um, is it can look really close, but like the snow is in like this in the snow. It says Merry Christmas and there's Noel, peace, love, and joy in the snow, but they're in like pastel colors. Um, I did a little Instagramming and I saw a few people do it, them in red and green. So I was thinking for sure Merry Christmas in red and green. And then I don't know if I want to do the other words in like the baby blue that is in there or if I'll do those in red and green too. So it remains to be seen. But those were my thoughts with that. I just wanted them to pop out a little bit more. So that is that almost 
new start. And I think, where do I want to go from here? Hall? Let's do Hall. So we were out and about today and went to Target. We don't go to Target very often. And in the dot, I must have hit it just right. So like in that little like dollar section, that's now like the three and five dollar section, they had a few things. So this little Christmas tree shelf was there for five dollars. It's wood and it's like meant to go in a corner. Um, so I had to have this and I have some ideas for like a little gnome scape potentially, um, especially like I was thinking as a background, like doing like a fun little background for Flossmas, Chris, for Flossmas. So I am excited to try and figure out what I want to do with that. And then they had this wood display box as well. Oh, I'm showing you the back. It was $5 too, this wood display box. You know, I, I figure this would um, be a fun finish somehow. Don't know how yet, but I wanted to take this home and have it as I'm sure I'll be able to do like an ornament size something would be really cute in here. Um, I don't know how, don't think it says how big it is. So the inside is four and a half wide. And if you don't count the pitch of the roof, it's about, so if, like just from like here, it's about it's just under five inches. And then with the pitch of the roof, the, the, view, the inside viewing area is six and a half inches. So four and a half by six and a half ish. And then the whole thing stands, my, ooh, sorry about that, to my ruler room. Almost eight inches tall and about five and three quarters wide. So I'm sure I will find something to do with that. Maybe a little bit small for one of these, but that just kind of gives you an idea, like the smaller mill hills, that's what they would look like. So that will go in my stash for finishing something that isn't a relatively large sampler, like what I mostly stitch on. That is what it is. Okay, I gotta reach down and grab the rest of my haul. So in two weeks I have a lot of random to share, but it's all exciting. So get the crazy weird things out of the way maybe. Here's my steam the seam. I got a two pack from Amazon and it's actually two little quarter inch rolls in one that are kind of stuck together. It took me using it a few times to even realize that there's um, the two rolls are stuck together. So uh, it works. It has worked really well for me so far. I'm impressed by it. I kind of have wondered where it's been all my life. So yeah, uh, it's a really great grab from Amazon. With that order from Amazon, I was struggling with threading my beading needle. I talked about the last when I did my pumpkin trio. Um, and so I got, oh man, they're like not, I want to get them so you can actually see them, but they're like, they got jostled and they're not in there right. So I got these, you can kind of see the idea from the picture, color eyes. So the eyes of the beading needles, different sizes, but the eyes are colored and they look like wider, eye, like longer eyes. So even if they have to be narrow, they at least give you a little more space to thread. So I'm going to see if these are easier for threading. And then I wanted to try these too. So these are like collapsible or whatever these, like the wire here is really wide and then it squeezes down when you go through the fabric and through the bead. Um, so I want it, oh, they are called collapsible. See, I'm not crazy, but, uh, I'm not just making things up, but, um, I wanted to try these. The reviews are kind of mixed on these on Amazon. They say that maybe they're, they're easily broken. So you have to be gentle with them. I am not a gentle stitcher. So we'll see how those go. But I think that was a part of the reason why I chose the color eyes as well to try those. Cause I think those will be a little bit sturdier. Um, and I wanted to have something better than what comes in the Mill Hill kits. They're great needles. Um, I was successful with them, but sometimes I just can't get them threaded. And it's not because I can't see, it's just really hard to get two strands of DMC through that little eye. Uh, okay. Oh, I'm gonna have to open this. Let me rearrange some things down here so I have things in reach. Let's see here. So I got this pack of, I think this was on Amazon. Yeah? Yeah. Merry Christmas stickers. And I, um, you know, I got my book of days and I was looking for things that were more seasonal. I did get the antiquarian books, but 
they were just not quite what I was looking at. It's not quite my style. For the, like, There's some cute things in there, but largely not my style, which is fine. Um, it's, they're still fun to have, and I'm sure I'll use some of them, but I wanted something. Oh, this is really fun. These have, sorry, I haven't looked at these yet. So it's really hard. It's going to be really hard to see, but these are 25. It's a Christmas countdown. So like, uh, there's a little picture for each day. The problem is going to be, do I save it for next year? Do I want to use it? Because I have this trouble, like, use the things you have and enjoy them. That should be life. That should be the motto, right? But, like, really nice things, I sometimes I feel like I tend to hold on to because I, like, want to have it pretty and perfect forever. Um, look at the little cat sleeping. Oh, adorable. So, I need to, like, the moral of the story is I need to use them and not try to save them. So, I got some bigger Christmas stickers. Oh, that's cute like a little Charlie Brown tree and a cat sleeping this is really a little couch Ooh. books this wreath is adorable too is it like oh I'm gonna sneeze <coughs> hmm. <coughs> all right we'll see if I edit that out or not <laughs> um it's not cut out in the middle so you could it just it, which is fine. It just changes maybe how you would use it. Um, some like little logs by the fire. Cat, cat stretching. A little, is that a mocha pot? Is that what it's called? A little mocha coffee pot. Oh, I'm a big fan of holly. I love me some cute holly. Chris, more Christmas trees, mittens. That's so fun. These are like little pictures and sayings. little activities to do. Ooh, hygge. This could even, I could probably even use for January. January is a good hygge month too. Candles, Sunday chills, cozy, socks. Socks are a good hygge. And tea. And then some circle stickers. I haven't seen any gnomes yet. Where are the gnomes? Some, ooh. Ha, oh, I'm a fan. Look, look, look. It's a month. Holiday movies, recipes, holiday plans, gifts, wish list. Those are fun. And some square stickers. Oh my gosh, there's so much here. And another sheet of square ones. And then some like tag looking stickers. Another set of different tags. This was a good this was a good buy. And then back to the beginning. So that was really fun. It's like a little, a little impromptu unpackaging. So yeah, I'm excited now that I have shown you all to use those. I um, participated in Friday Night Fight Night, the Stitch Me's Friday Night Fight Night, and I got this watermelon slushy, 40 count linen, 36 count linen. It's an 18 by 27 piece. It's super bright. It's not 100% me. I don't know how I'm going to use it. It'll definitely go in my stash. Um, I was looking for, I remember last video, that um, cher more like cherry color that I wanted to use for Here Be Dragons. Um, that's what I was, sorry for the wrinkling. That's what I was looking for. And I think this maybe would have worked, but I like that other fabric that I got from Atomic Ranch better. So this will go in my stash. It might be fun for like uh, holiday stitching if there's a pattern that's like lots of green. Like I could do like turquoise and green and white and leave like the red for the watermelon. That would be fun. So that's going to go in my stash. No current plans for that at this point. Um, the Black Needle Society released some things into their vault for a few other boxes. So they did like a spooky and a spoofy or like kind of fun Halloween box. And you, you picked between the two. I did not get the boxes, but there were a few things I did want to snag. Um, there was a, I was on there like right, like the second it was released, refresh, refreshing my screen. They, everything popped in. I added like four items. It was super fast. Went to check out and the thread that I wanted was already gone. Like, I don't know if they just must not have had a lot or people went on and just ordered the thread. But um, from my experience with Black Needle Society, they're a really great company. I enjoy their stuff. But they charge you, they don't, 
like look at your order or keep track like if you have multiple orders with them they fulfill and ship everything separate which is fine um because you're paying for the shipping other um other shops i have ordered through are good about like looking and then crediting crediting you back the shipping if they and combining your orders to save on that so needless to say it might be that someone went on there like grabbed the thread because they knew it would be a hot thing and then like i could have done that right i could have done like multiple orders but then i would have paid the shipping twice and i didn't love that idea so it's, i didn't get the thread it's fine um i didn't need it it was just something that would have went in my stash anyways but i did get a few things so i mostly in high school and junior high i read a lot of stephen king so in their spooky box, this was the pattern. It's by the Witchy Stitcher. It's like a bunch of different Stephen King things. There's like The Shining and Carrie. Um, the guys from Stand By Me down here. The car. I don't... Did I read this one? It was so long ago. Uh, is that Cujo here? Um, Children of the Corn down here. It didn't read Children of the Corn. That movie creeped me out. I didn't read it either. That movie, just pieces of it creeped me out. So... Um, and then, what is this one? Bah! The one with Kathy Bates. Misery. <laughs> She's in a couple of Stephen Kings in the 80s, 90s, whatever. Um, so I think that one is, nope, I lied. Down here is Misery. Um, this one is The Shining. Anyways, so lots, I'm missing references, but lots of references to a bunch of different books. Not 100% my personal style. Uh, I might stitch it someday. I definitely, I, I just wasn't sure. I liked it enough to want to have it in my stash so that someday I might stitch it. Um, but I think it's super fun and it's really cool and I love the connection to that part of my life. So we'll see. But I, it's, a real, it's a really great idea. Um, so with that, I did, um, they did a stitching... No, this was their Christmas in July. I think they still had some stickers. This wasn't released in October. This has been in the vault for a little while. They had some holiday stickers. Um, and so I thought since I was ordering, I wanted to grab a few of those, grab a sheet of those. So those are fun. The, I think this, the, this was the linen in the, it's a Mystic Fabrics linen. 32 count. This was the linen in, I think, the spoofy, the fun Halloween box. So I thought that would be a fun color to have in my stash. I don't have a ton of, a ton of 32. And then I thought this would be fun for next year. It's Halloween candy headband. Now that I'm back uh, working in the hospital and I wear scrubs every day or most days, um, every once in a while I gotta put my hair up and a little headband would be fun for that, that, that time of year. So that is everything from the Black Needle Society. But wait, there's more. Um, I think I mentioned last time that I'm attending the Jingle Ball. Um, I'm not able to do a ton of the classes, but I am going to get on and check things out and um, at least visit the, the designers' stores and get my... Um, so they're releasing, like, a, I think all of the designers, from my understanding, will have the book of ornaments one from every at least one from every designer that's exclusive to the jingle ball so i'm for sure going to at least get that um but they came out with a t-shirt and that, that logo is just like i couldn't resist it so this is what the t-shirt looks like so that came very very quick i ordered it and it printed and like i swear like it the next day it was um I got like the shipment thing and then I think the day after it like officially shipped and was like in the system and moving so it came really really fast I was impressed so get your Jingle Ball swag they had t a couple different style t-shirts uh, a few color options for each style um, and then they did have a sweatshirt too sweatshirt super cute um, and it looked really cozy I don't need another sweatshirt and it was like a light pink just not quite my color so I figured for this year, I'll go with a t-shirt, and we'll see what comes in the future, but um, check out the swag. I thought that was really a fun idea. I was kind of wondering, like, why they didn't have anything, so I'm really glad that someone else spoke up, and then they decided to do swag, so really fun. Uh, I'm trying to decide what order to do things in. 
This is super sm smelly. I just got to smell a whiff of it. So my local uh, yarn and needleworks store, Country Needleworks, I, of course, I stopped by their, they had their Christmas sale. And so every year they do like a Christmas sale, a holiday open house type thing um, where they have like drawings and I got a, I spent enough money that I caught a cute little ornament as like a giveaway. Um, I didn't win any of the raffle, but that's okay. Um, and so I stopped in and they still have their uh, Atomic Ranch fabrics. And so I got this 40 count parchment. It's almost like a ballet slippers. Like it's like an ever so slight pink. So I know that'll be great for a project at some point. And I'm holding, I'm holding the label upside down, but like, no, that's washing out the fabric. Uh, and I'm showing you everything else. And then I picked up two, ooh, these are 20 grams. So are these mini skeins? They're not like, so Emma's yarn, they have like a hank, a half of a hank, and then the mini skeins. I don't remember what the half hanks are called. Um, and so I got Take a Hike and Kale. This is my, has been so far, my preferred gnome stitching um, yarn because it was just the my very first knit along that I did. I had an Emma's pack that was like a specially curated pack. Um, but I picked up these greens because Sarah Shira from Imagine Landscapes, along with her gnomes, she this year earlier, she released um, some evergreen tree knitting, a knitting pattern to knit evergreen gnome trees. So I wanted some green in case I, I want to get that pattern and think about doing that. But there's so many things, right? So I have them for when I wanted to, to stitch one up. Okay. And then I think my last haul thing is this bag. And this is a Fox and Hair Creations. I should show you the front because there's a little tag there. It's a Fox and Hair Creations bag. That's what it looks like. Oh, their little label looks like. It is um it's just a thin cotton, no lining bag. Not thin, but it just isn't lined. Um and then it's got a cute little ribbon in it so you can cinch it. Um, and in it is my Loopy You uh, Gnome Knit Along Kit. So my first, my yarn. So we pre-ordered these in the end of August, beginning of September. Um, and so these were, they were two colorways that were specially curated. I picked Rudolph's Favorites is what it's called. So there's this gray, a red, these two greens that play really well together with this tealy blue that has the variegation of the green and the the two greens in there so really fun um so it's a total of 100 yards it's a um so the emma's and this are fingering weight um it is a super wash with nylon so it's technically a sock yarn sorry i'm trying to see I mean, is it 100? Is that how it works? Is it 100 grams? I don't know, because it's 5. It's usually 4. Wait, no, 5 times 20 is 100. Math is math is hard. Um, so then I have on my label, like, the colors that they are, and then, like, I think those, can, those are, when the pattern comes out, I'll know what colors to use based because of the number. So my guess is this is Ghost Town. Um, I guess that the red is Poppy. Joshua tree, probably this, the darker green, because green light is the other name. I'm going to guess that one's that one. And then mint drop is that teal color. So um, the pattern this time in the past, the knit alongs have usually had four colors. So it's like three main body color, three body colors. So like two main body color, two main body colors and accent and then the beard and nose. Um, this one is five, so she's got something up her sleeve for sure. For sure, that Sarah. Um, I think the gnome's name this year is Nova. G N O V A is her name. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to get that started on December one. We'll get. We don't. You are. We get enough time to be done by the 24th um, with all of the clues for knitting, and it's not a knitting clue every day. Um, I noticed that she's really good about planning out like the releases so that like if I if you have it 
you get something every day, but you don't always get knitting every day. You get like a story or we got even got a few recipes last year. Um, and she's good about like, no, if it's like a bigger chunk or a more difficult chunk of time, she that's usually when like you get a break that day and it's not an, another um, knitting part. Um, I've also noticed like if it's a day where she recommends like sometimes like that last year with the hat, she recommended um, blocking it. So then like the next day we didn't have a pattern. So the, she gives you time to block it so that as you're going along, you can, you know, try to keep up. And I did get behind a few times. Um, it was my very first project. It was a little intense work. It was my, not my first time knitting in the round, um, but it was my first gnome. My first color, was there color work in it? No, there wasn't color work in it. Um, but it was, I just, I had a lot of trial and error with like tiny, tiny, uh, fingering yarn with tiny needles. I broke some bamboo needles cause like I didn't know better than like just to not get like bamboo circular needles off or double points off of Amazon. Um, so went to my local knitting, knitting store, um, a few times to get tips, finally got her figured out. But like there were pieces that I was like back and forth, like, and I learned to put yarn a key to put like a piece of scrap yarn to hold my stitches at a few key places or otherwise pulling it out it was really tough to not go all the way back to the beginning and just start over so I knit that gnome probably three or four times over at least the hat I'll show him during Flossmas um but it was really I learned again it was hard but it was fun and it was challenging and I learned a lot Last year, I participated with my um, mother-in-law. I bought her the pattern and the yarn as part of her birthday present, and so we knit it together, and we were able to send each other pictures back and forth when we hit different uh, milestones and chat about different pieces of the pattern and how frustrating it was or not. Um, I knit continental? I don't know. I knit with my yarn in the opposite hand of how most yarn knitters from the states that I know. I knit like with crochet where I keep my yarn in my left hand like and you know how like crocheters use with their anyways and she knits the other way and so we can talk about technique a little bit but it is different when you have two different ways of knitting. Um, but it was really fun to knit along with her. Um, I broke her <laughs> because that project working on such small yarn she's um, had a sore thumb so she hasn't really knit much this year which is unfortunate so she won't be knitting again with me this year and I don't want her to because I don't want I want her to be able to get back to knitting and doing things that she likes to do so I wouldn't want her to cause any more injury to her thumb um, but yeah I'm excited to, to to knit along with you all this year so my ch Flossmas channel will be cross stitch and knitting I hope that's okay and you'll humor me um, I feel like a lot of Floss tubers I watch at least also knit as well. So I am multi craftual and that is okay. So the rest of the bag, there's still more in here. I did purchase the, it's not really an advent kit. I can show you one. They're like little, little like fun prizes and treats that go along with the knit along. So I think there's 12 in here. If I remember when I dug through, um, they're all labeled with numbers, and so in the, the clues of each day, she'll tell us when to open each bag. Like, I think last year there was, like, a, a button that went on the gnome that was in here for the people who did pre-purchase pre these. So, not available. These were pre-order, um, but I'm really excited to get kicked off. They, that, between that and the, um, the Ever Totes. Modern Folk Embroidery, Leo and Roxy, um, Advent Box, Advent Box slash Stitch Along. I'm super excited for Advent this year. So put that over there with my bag that the yarn will go in. And I think I just have plans left to talk about. Um, so my plans, I, I hope I'll be back by December 1. I feel like I'll need to kind of like wrap up. I don't know if I'll do full class 2 videos. Um, over the month on top of daily so I think it would make a lot of sense to get in front of you again before December 1 so um, I do have a few plans so we talked about oh, it's snowing a lot um, I did talk about Christmas Eve Prairie Schooler that's coming out I also have another Christmas um, I'm doing 
I don't have it in front of me, but I have been working on, or just started, I have a little small start on Christmas Garden by Blackbird in a Leo and Roxy conversion. I might have shown it a couple weeks ago. Um, I apologize at my horrible memory, but I might get that back out because I do really love that pattern and I've gotten distracted by all the shiny Christmas things. Uh, I've got the, the tree topper ornament to keep working on and then I do have a Thanksgiving start that I think I showed last time but I got more more work to do so I picked I, I didn't do I've done I've done more kidding since then so I picked my fabric I decided to go with the rest of my cut of hog bristle that I had for um, that I used on I am no bird and so I'm gonna be using that um, and so it's cut to size-ish. It'll go this way. This is feast, I didn't say. So 40 count hog bristle, and I'm working on cutting up feast of friendship. So this will be my, I think I'm gonna do a Thanksgiving Eve start. So I have Thanksgiving Eve and Thanksgiving day. I only have to bring corn bake and hippical roll-ups. And my son and son, oh my gosh. <laughs> my husband and daughter like have hamburger roll up mastery like making like they could work in a factory and make a business of making hamburger roll ups they make them so fast and efficiently so I don't have to worry about the hamburger roll ups I just have to make the corn bake which again is really straightforward and easy so um, I should have a quite a bit of time on uh, Thanksgiving Eve to to work on this uh, and then Thanksgiving Day when I'm not spending time with family. Um, and all of the Thanksgiving things, I will be able to work on it. So I am doing a conversion. I did more. So I got all of my flosses wound and cut. I use a Stacy Stitches Creative Studio 18 inch winder that I just set aside. I like literally just finished using it and then I should have showed it to you. But um, so I have, so I got all of my flosses wound. I like to um, undo the, instead of just, instead of opening these, Instead of just cutting these here, these are not long enough lengths of floss for me, for my preference. Um, and so I take them out into their like hank and then wind them. I can show that during Flossmas because we'll be. I'm assuming we'll be getting full. I think we're getting full full cards. Um, so I can show you how how I do that. But so this gets me the length that I like. Um, I have this all kitted up. I. And thinking about I want to look again so like I mentioned birds the word is one of the colors that was in be Mary I'm gonna bring that over so I don't have to use this one um, and then there are a few colors in like this I picked Palomino like I just I have some other options now from like my be Mary stash specifically the do I have it behind me I do okay Let's just do this. Okay, so for example, so my Verge the Word, it's going to go in there. And I can pull that other one out and save it for something else. And I'll just have to make a note that it is a full skein so I won't be nervous about like running out of it for another project. And then I've got these golds that go in the project. Mm, these browns and golds. Do, do. Um, so those three, the lighting isn't great, I'm sorry. And then, but Colonel Mustard came from that kit. I haven't, didn't have that before. So I'm going to have to look and see, and I did double up a little bit. So do I want to add Colonel Mustard in? Um, he might be a really great, I don't think, there's a pineapple in Feast of, I'll show it again, Feast of Friendship and I don't have a yellow. So like Colonel Mustard might be a better pineapple outside color than, I don't know, maybe this tan is, I don't know. We're gonna play with it and we're gonna see. But anyway, so I wanted to look at the golds that, that I chose again and like what I matched them to and see if I wanted to add in Colonel Mustard. Was that really long explanation short. So I'm pulling those two out. And then I there are also, <clears throat> greens in here so we already talked about birds the word and then 
I picked, I just had it oops, from a, I write on the back of my, I don't know why, because I'm crazy. So Oct you see an October and an, or an OCT for October and an N. I write when I get my Leo and Roxy monthly collection, I get the brights and the neutrals. Uh, I write on the back of the card, so I, rem I don't, in case I want to remember where it came from. Um, so I pulled Pinery from that. But I have whoop, I have asparagus. Goodness gracious. Artichoke and asparagus. So I wanted to look at the greens also and like make sure I wanted to to go with pinery in the end. So I think the benefit, they're really close. Um, asparagus is really, really close to Pinery, really, in all honesty. I don't know that Pinery is one that Caroline chose to keep in the, sorry, if you couldn't even see what I was doing. So this is asparagus and Pinery. They're really close to each other, and I don't know that Pinery is one Caroline decided to keep in the shop. I think when they are quite similar, they don't. Um, and so, which makes a lot of sense. So, um, if it, it might be repro more reproducible for others if I don't use Pinery, but also, I mean, I'm still using my stash technically, but like, I, why do I have those classes if I don't use them? You know, that whole, that whole thing. So we will, I will keep you posted on that. So I um, spent a little time this week when I was done with stitching and my eyes were tired. Winding the flosses is the moral of the story to get ready for that start. And then I did work on So there's the pineapple I was talking about. I did work on like a little bit more clear conversion. I've never, I haven't done a conversion at like quite this extent and then also combining colors. So for example, in the Blackbird, there's four blues, three blues. They're all going to be one blue for me um, for the house. And so I wasn't quite sure like how to do that in my head, both for myself to make sure that I was matching the right symbol with the right color. I didn't want to put on the floss cards yet because I wanted to make sure I was happy with the color choices and then also like a way to share it with you all. So this is what I have so far for the conversion. So these, let me make sure I'm telling you right. These are the gassed colors. I think it might be gassed and country classic color works. Yes, it's a mix of country color. Is that right? Classic, oh my goodness. Classic color works in Gentle Art and then to the Leo and Roxy conversion. So I might have to update this card depending on what I decide with those two colors. And then I don't know if Bubbly is for sure. I'll have to look. Bubbly is one of the colors in Be Mary. That, there's a really great chance that Ellen chose this for her floss pack, so I gotta pull that floss pack out and see. If Bubbly is in her um, floss pack, I will pull it, pull out the fresh skein and put this one in as, as its replacement. And I know for a fact, because she talked about it, Ellen put powdered up, which that's that really pretty blue that like just isn't, it's like blue, but there's like this tealy blue that it variegates to that's like really gorgeous. and it. You don't see it even in the floss. It's like really, it's that one that I lost it now. That shows up in that. It's just, it can't, doesn't do it justice. Um, but I love it. So good choice, Ellen. But that's going to go in there and then I'll pull that fresh one out. Um, Cause I, I know I'll have enough of that color for her pattern. And then I won't have like multiple open of this, like multiple use of the same color. Anyways, and I'm sure there's got to be an inappropriate somewhere, but whether or not I've already kitted it up, I think inappropriate is in, I got to do a whip parade, inappropriate is in, oh my gosh, the Valentine one. I can see it over there sitting in my pile. Someone just finished it too. It's a really, this is like, this might be one of my favorite reds. Um, I love mulberry, but like gorgeous so good fallu is great but like this one so i can't remember if inappropriate or fallu red is in that modern folk embroidery the two birds with the heart 
whatever that, you know what I'm talking about. I'll put it in the description if I can remember. So anyway, so that's it. It's exciting to kind of be able to like start moving things around. There's similar colors. Um, I just ended up getting them at like a similar enough time that I was in my memory. I know, I can remember how much of it I used from this project to move it into something else. And then I think my greens, if I don't use them for this project, they'll go like in my Christmas, I think maybe it's just asparagus, but I think maybe asparagus and asparagus, <laughs> asparagus and artichoke are in the Jeanette Douglas floss pack from last year's holiday um, that I got when I was at the Evertoads open house. So like those can go in there and I can pull the artichoke out. Um, yeah, I always when I, I, I actually like to eat asparagus um, and I'm a nurse and in biology in microbi we took microbiology in school and we learned about aspergillus and aspergillus is uh, an infection you can get it in your blood it's uh, I think it's technically I don't know if it's a bacteria or a fungus I'd have to look back I think it's like a like a fungus C bacteria I don't know it's a, it's a thing right um, and you can get ty type you can get aspergillus in your lungs it's a common place to get it um, and then also it's not good but I think asp aspergillus is uh, a bloodstream infection that you can get as well, um, which is, I don't know what, why I'm talking about medical stuff. Anyways, I like to call asparagus aspergillus because it's nursing humor and it's silly and dumb, but I like, aspergillus is such a much more fun name than asparagus, so it's aspergillus. Okay. So those are my plans. This video, I feel like I'm like spiraling. <laughs> um... So my plans this week, such as much as I can, enjoy Thanksgiving, stay away from Black Friday in person at least, support small businesses on Saturday and Cyber Monday, try to stay off Prime and all of that crazy Prime shopping. Um, I have a lot, I don't have a ton of Christmas presents purchased, I have a lot of ideas for them. Um, and so I like to kind of have Christmas done relatively early so I can really enjoy the month of December doing all of the Christmassy things and, um, and not rushing. So I'll probably kind of be thinking and working on that. I'll be working on my frames. I don't know that I'll have anything ready for you because it'll be a multi-step process. I have for sure three projects that I want to frame and I want to do them all together, which is probably a bad idea, right? Like... I should probably do one and make sure it works and like how I think I should do it works and turns out nice. But like that's not my style. My style is like efficient. So I'm going to do like all of the steps for all of them because I only want to get the my, the chopping miter saw thing, whatever it's called. I know how to work it, I swear. I just don't know what to call it. Um, to do my miter cuts, I want to get that out once. So I'm going to do all of the gluing because there is some wood gluing in it um, and then do all the cutting glue them together and then do all the staining and then I'll be able to start lacing and because um, I can't start lacing until I could maybe start lacing while I'm waiting for the staining because the once I I don't want to measure my foam core until I know so right because your foam core needs to be the width of the frame of your the width of the, op the inside opening of your frame but it also needs to be whatever, um, as it needs to be close to the size of like your little lip on the inside that holds your foam core, foam core or your backing in place. Um, and so I don't know what those will be until I get them together because of how I'm making them. So once I have them together and they're glued and I can like triple check the measurements, I can cut my foam core might have to go to the dollar store and get more, but I can cut my foam core and then start lacing, which um, I think I've tried lacing. Did I? I think I laced my, um, this is my Downton Abbey Y metal um, from their February Valentine's box was Val Downton themed. Uh, so I did, I laced that. It didn't go great, um, but I'm gonna watch the Lindy Stitches video again. Uh, Caroline promises that she's going to come out with a lacing video, so I think it's find it helpful to like watch a bunch of different people because then you can kind of like merge the tricks from everyone and you know try different things that work for you. So, moral of the story is I'll be working on the frames. I don't know that I'll have any done and laced. Maybe I will. I don't know. 
um, that I'm really excited. I bought three different color, like four different frame, four different like wood design, like wood scroll, whatever, scroll work um, designs um, so that I don't have all the same frame. And then three different colors of stain that are all the same. <coughs> Excuse me, you can tell I'm talking too long. The same t type of stain. So that, <coughs> excuse me, so I can blend them if I want to change up the colors a little bit. <coughs> so, okay, so I need to be done talking clearly. Thank you for hanging with me. I don't know how we're at an hour and 20 again already. Clearly I need to do this more often. Um, thanks so much for watching. Like and subscribe. Come and say hi on Instagram. Follow me there at JerJerXStitches. Um, I hope that you all have a wonderful holiday um, if you're in the States and celebrating Thanksgiving. Um, and if you're not, I hope you have a wonderful week and you stay safe and I will see you soon. Bye.